Hi, welcome, welcome again for a very interesting topic, ASMR session. Today, let's talk about some sci-fi misconceptions and find the right answer for them. Well, I think it's I think it's very interesting. We're gonna talk about sci-fi and uh, for ASMR things. I'm still using the pen and paper, right? So, just a moment to put in order my thoughts, which I collected them. On a piece of paper, of course. That's darkness. Good. So, let's start. First, the first misconception is about the sound in space. In space. Well, many sci fi movies depicts sound in space where we are knowing that in space there is no air to transmit sound waves it's vacuum vacuum so the sound cannot travel through vacuum in space Good. Next, stop this dude and this one. Well, I saw. The next misconception is about the interstellar travel. While some sci fi movies often portray spaceships that are traveling vast distances across the universe in a very short time. Well, the vastness of space and the limitation of physics suggest that this interstellar travel would likely take a very long time, even with advanced technologies. With advanced technologies. Because we can associate to our current technologies mostly. But in fictional movies, you can teleport items right through the space instantly. Good. Next. The next one hmm. from my paper. Aliens in sci-fi movies often conventionally speak English, right? Or some other human language. Actually, the likelihood of extraterrestrial life communicating in a language comprehensible to humans is almost impossible, almost impossible, and that's apply also if they can intercept our communication, they will not understand what we are saying. Well, I believe they are out there, there are some very high extraterrestrial advanced life forms that can communicate through impossible or in imaginable ways to human beings but that's a subject for another sci-fi for some this is a sci-fi subject so. good so next next Gravity control, gravity control. 
Mm. Well, in sci-fi movies, uh, the artificial gravity is depicted in spaceships, of course, or other celestial bodies without explaining how it's achieved. In reality, generating gravity artificially would require a very advanced technology, and which is not yet developed, and that's why we like sci-fi, because the imagination is our only barrier. Next one. We cannot talk about sci fi without mention the weapons, the sci fi weapons. Many sci fi stories feature energy weapons, right? Right? Those who fire a laser beam or protons beam or ions beam. Of course, weapons, energy weapons, and shields as common tools in a warfare. While these concepts are theoretically possible, the practical challenges of generating and controlling such vast amount of energy, it's unlikely to be in the near future possible because it will need another completely a new design of new super advanced technological power producers who can produce a huge amount of energy human travel or time travel in sci-fi movies. Time travel was always a fascinating subject. We are knowing that. But in sci-fi movies, time travel is depicted and almost it's often inv uh, invokes paradoxes that defy the laws of physics, and we can imagine how the time travel will look like in a sci-fi movie, but based on our knowledge, this is impossible right now. So, Wow. Well, human likes robots, so human like robots and artificial intelligence. In science fiction movies, they are portrayed mostly, mostly robots and artificial intelligence as form human appearances, behavior and emotions. Well, these are very impressive and very good realized in CGI, in terms of CGI. But creating, even in sci fi music, truly human like entities reminds a challenge, right? Uh, we can imagine only that in the future, that future will be thousand years from now, there will be artificially intelligence that will predict emotions, they have capable of feelings and so on. FD 
FTL. Well, FTL stands for faster than life. This is a trend in many sci-fi movies, enabling a character to travel between two points A and B with in a short time so, or between star systems. According to our current understanding of physics, exceeding the speed of light, it's not feasible to add to the principle of relativity, relativity, relativity. But in sci-fi movies, everything is possible, or in sci-fi scenarios. Well, science fiction is about space and aliens. Good question. Well, these are the most depicted terms, or mostly common terms, in sci-fi movies or scenarios. But the genre, it encompasses much more. It explores a wide range of speculative concepts, including artificial intelligence, dystopian societies, time travel, or alternate history, that, or futuristic technology. science fiction scenarios or movies are predictive while some science fiction works aim to predict future technologies or social trends many others types are concerned with exploring philosophical questions or simply entertaining the imaginative, 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 sorry, worlds. Not all sci-fi movies and subjects are meant to be like a crystal bar of the future. Next one, it's a good one. It's sci-fi only for jigs. Well, actually, no. This is a misconception. Or a stereotype that sci-fi it's only for a very limited niche of audience or hardcore fans. In reality, science fictions has a broad of appeal and can cater a variety of tastes. And it can apply in every field and every domain. For example, if we can apply a sci-fi scenario of the past of a history like a human alternative or a human development as alternative history, for example, that's another science fiction scenario. And yes. Sometimes some people mistakenly believe that science fiction lacks of literary merit compared to the other genres. The truth is that uh, science fiction it's produced many acclaimed works that are celebrating uh, or from base storyline or storytelling 
or character development. For example, most, or not most, let's say many of the sci-fi subjects have roots in literature. Authors like Isaac Asimov, Ursula K. Le Guin, Philip Dick have demonstrated the literary depth of the genre. Science fiction is about always new and future technology. Let's explain this a little bit. While futuristic technology is a common feature in the sci-fi scenarios, not all the works were focused or are focused on high-tech gadgets and super and or alien civilization. Some sci-fi stories are set in the worlds where supposedly the technology regressed or where the focus on the social implications uh, it's more than advanced technology. So maybe it can be back in the in the past. Another misconception, sci-fi is just for escapism. Well, the science fiction provides escapism. It has a long tradition in ad of addressing real-world issues. But many science fiction works also offer insightful commentary on topics such as politics, social justice and mostly human condition. Human condition. It's science fiction, always optimistic. If it's American, yes, <laughs> there will be a happy end. But while some science fiction stories present a hopeful vision of the future, others don't forget are exploring a dystopian or apocalyptic scenarios. So they were pessimistic in that point of view. The science fiction is a versatile genre and has many outlooks. From the utopian dreams to cautionary tales of the dystopian or human folly. Another misconception is the next one. Okay, so this hmm. It's science fiction, exclusively Western. Okay, well, while the science fiction genre has most its roots in the Western literature, also there are traditional speculative fictions in every culture around the world. Around the world there are authors from 
diverse backgrounds, which bring unique perspective to the genre, enriching it. So, it is not only exclusively Western. What will be sci-fi without aliens? Aliens. Let's talk about them. Let's touch these misconceptions. In most cases, most, I presume most, <laughs> so often, let's say not most, aliens are depicted as humanoids or slightly variation of human features. They have members like us, they have foot feet, they have one head, but we don't know how they really are in reality. We can only presume. But taking account that the actual diversity of life forms, if they exist, the aliens could be far beyond our imaginations and might not resemble anything familiar with. So, we can only imagine that the aliens have a human-like look or human-like features, but who knows? Maybe they are like monsters, I don't know. Every life form that is outside of art, it's an alien life form, so you name it, you know that. So I well, this one is interesting. Did the science fiction emerged in the 20th century. Well, while the term science fiction was coined in the 20th century, speculative and fantastical elements in storytelling date back much further. Early examples can be found in ancient mythology, such as tales of flying machines in Hindu epics or the travels to fantastical lands in works from authors like Homer, the Odyssey. Yes, yes the Odyssey from Homer, Homer it is a very science fiction story, darling. And is sci fi only by it predicting the future? Well, let's go in the past and let's meet the early sci-fi writers like Jules Verne and Wells did envision future technologies. The genre has always open and been about more of just a prediction because speculative fiction serve as the lens which author had explored social ethical and history questions, often reflecting the concerns of their own time, rather than attempting to predict the future. Well, even so, it's very speculative to see that we can imagine that in the future that will be some spaceships armed with shields, cannons, and lasers 
driven by artificial intelligence or human likes uh, aliens or in the future will be an alien invasion invasion in the or on on the art of course this will these were the based subject of a very trendy and undying Hollywood them and genre. very fascinated about Star Wars and now on but when I was young I was dreamed to be a Star Wars hero so early sci-fi was only for children another misconception in some ways the early science fiction works were targeted at younger readers. Many were intended for adult audience. But let's again return to Jules Verne. Authors like him wrote abroad of readerships and addressed mature temps in their work for all the genre and all the ages. The perception of a sci-fi as primary juvenile literature began to change mostly during the 20th century 20th century well actually this was the last one this was the last one so Well, I hope you enjoy. This was some sort of soft-spoken and whispering at the same time. I hope you enjoyed this kind of subject, which for me was very interesting. And of course, we are at the end now. Until next time. Uh, of course, I wish you all the best. And don't forget to let down, to drop a comment below. I want to know your opinion about this kind of series of misconceptions. Thank you. Bye-bye.